Oh. Okay, if I talk, is it going to do? Yes. Talking. What up? It's like my day's over already. What's going on around here? What's happening? Hi, baby. Uh, be, be still late. Doesn't matter what time we start. It's noon. You hear the bells? Our church bells are going nuts. That's cool. Yeah, that's. Dude, I'm uh, excited to hang out with you guys. I and mean, I'm also. I'm going to miss it. We're going to be uh, all, all of us. Where are we at? You're going up to, you're going up to your home? Yeah. Wisconsin? That is right. Yeah, I don't feel very good today. I don't know what's going on. You got a haircut. Maybe that's part of it. That's probably why. I'm probably ruining really... it. What else is going on? Nothing. We leave today, though. Oh yeah, this afternoon, right? Yeah. So this won't get posted for probably in two, two, three months. No, I think I'll be able to still post it tomorrow, I guess. No way. Yeah, we'll see. I'll yeah. post last week's today before I leave. And then, uh, this other one, I'll, it'll probably actually post sometime next week. But I'll do it. I said it when I'm in the airport and stuff. I got nothing to do, so I can knock it out with that. Do you fly straight into Chicago or Green Bay? Where are you going? Where do you go? I'm in the last one. How long does the go for, man? I don't know. I hope it doesn't go the whole time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it'll stop before V shows up. Maybe. My money's on B showing up after the steps. I'm looking, I'm finishing up a thank you card. It plays Amazing Great? I think so. I think it plays, yeah, it plays the whole hymnal. Like one, hymns one through six. <laughs> <laughs> there she is! I lost a dollar or something. I don't know. <laughs> I thought the, the, the bells would, would Hi, stop. Hi, people. Hey, good to see you. What are those bells? We kind of had to wait. We had to wait till the bells are over. I guess I can close the sliding glass door and make it quieter. It's so beautiful. Yeah. It's it was the first two and a half minutes be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, plays, it plays the first three hymns. The three hymns of the hymn. First three verses were good. Yeah. <laughs> Huh. Did either of you guys grow up in churches where you would do a hymn at the end of the service and you like the pastor would get up and do these altar calls, but you would have to like just keep singing this hymn until until we felt, like enough people came forward who were supposed to come forward or whatever? I, no, you know, I, I've oh. been a part of services like that, but I no, I didn't grow up in a church like that. I think that's my back this tradition, but I grew up uh, like. And there were certain songs like "Just As I Am" or whatever. Like, in, it was like if they started and it went like two or three times through, and we we're still waiting, I'd just go up because I got sick of singing. Because so. you've been convicted by the Holy Spirit. Or that, mm -hmm. yeah, also possibly that, but mostly <laughs> I just got sick of singing the song. <laughs> you get up right and you're like, "Wrap it up, people! Wrap it up! Land the plane! Let's finish this thing, guys." <laughs> All right, who starts it and what's going on? What's the Wait, order? I need to think of three things. Come on. No, actually, yeah. Oh, I, can wait. I'm, I would had it wrong in my mind because I thought Greg texted the 9 a.m. So I was like, dude, I get to do it at 10. Oh, sorry. But then it was me, and I looked at the text again. I was like, oh, man. But it was it, much it, later. It made it, it made it so I got a lot of stuff done, which is good. It's really Anna, good. It's good to see you. Sorry, my camera still stinks. Just my I, chest. I'm not sure. I'm not sure you are sorry about that. <laughs> it's better than you know. 
it's funny because I got a camera a year after starting, and then it's a cheap one. And then B, B, you didn't see like we did it for a whole year without seeing me. <laughs> <laughs> I could see I know Greg, there was a but... microphone issue, but there was yeah, a yeah, there we was a camera the issue too. Thing, but yeah. <laughs> The golden year. Call it oh. the golden year. All right. So, uh, what what is the order? I don't even know. I feel like I started last time. I feel like you judged last time. No, I think Bianca. No, B B did judge. I did. Yeah, oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So what does that mean? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> How about I start it? I feel like I haven't started. Wait, and then the Maybe, time are you supposed to start? Start? I usually like it when B starts it though. I know that's my favorite. That's my favorite. Uh, then I judge it, right? Who I think can, I judge yeah. it. Okay, I think I like Jason judging. chose before me, so now it's Greg's turn. That's right. You that sounds right. Yeah, you Greg pick. chooses, so he's third. Yeah, he's, I go second. No, the chooser goes third. I mean, I go third. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> second. The person who doesn't go And how about B starts? Six. I like that. I like that too. I miss it. Okay, I am not running on this all the, cylinders, so I might miss the last, of words. This is the last one for a couple of weeks because we're all going on vacation. That's right, vacation yeah. edition. And you still and, have the other one to post from last week, right, Craig? Yep. B, get off my back, all right? <laughs> <laughs> it's an innocent question. Yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> Stop no, it's it's start it. You're a genius, Johnny. <laughs> <Lies. laughs> I know you do. You don't have it. <laughs> Because, you know, it's been like a week since we recorded it. And, no, I know. I know what happened. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh Let me practice in my head what I'm going to say. I actually need a third thing. Hold on a second. Of course. Of course you do. <laughs> oh, maybe I should yeah. zoom in. No, this doesn't do anything. Oh, no, that's not helpful. That's that doesn't do helpful. anything. It's clearer. I don't know, guys. You want to, I had like five. You want to take one of my? Yeah. Five, <laughs> are you? But we're pausing for just. Uh, she doesn't have a third thing. Maybe when you guys talk, it'll remind me of something. I for think real? I, probably, I have like ten yeah. things. I just don't. Every week. Every week, <laughs> you'll you'll come up with something along the way. Oh man. Okay. Because when you open, doesn't that mean I start, and then yeah. you go second, and then Greg yeah. goes third? Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. Oh, there we go. Let's get rolling. What's this called again? Week this week in gratitude. Oh, boy. yep. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> See, it's just gotten worse, and I haven't even said anything. <laughs> it's just gotten worse. <laughs> okay. You are listening to This Week in Gratitude. We are three friends who like to chat with each other once a week, talk about what we're grateful for. Um, we are Jason in Michigan, Greg in Texas, and me, Bianca, in Washington State. And welcome to our podcast. We're glad you're listening. And if you like it, then subscribe. And if you extra like it, then tell other people about our podcast so they can hear about the things we're grateful for, the things we recommend um, that you might be into also. And we are grateful for you. <laughs> That's it. Oh, I think yeah. oh, wow. I'm grateful Ooh. for the listeners. Next, landing. Ooh. You just nailed the landing. 9.7 <laughs> on the record. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Strong I can't believe yeah. we never thought of that one before, guys. Right? Boom. I know. That's, that's, okay. I'm, I'm I, for I get us rolling. I'm Jason <laughs> out here in Muskegon, Michigan, and I'm going to start hey, it with a, with a book. Yeah. Hold on just a second. I'm Greg in Texas, and uh, I just wanted, uh, before we get rolling too far, I was thinking about it. If everybody were to tell everybody who listens and likes the podcast were to tell forty six other people that I just if you know, <laughs> uh, it's kind of an arbitrary school, number yeah, yeah. And, and all that so but yeah tell tell people and we're going on vacation so this is our last one before vacation and then we'll come back uh, at the end of July beginning of August so uh, enjoy this one savor it. Because it's gonna last for a couple weeks. We should have your. We should have <laughs> your, 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 three times. <laughs> we should have your little brother uh, make us up a logo. That's a good idea. Don't you think? 
because he's like yeah. graphic designer guy, right? And, yeah, he's, he's kind of has a hardcore edge, you know. Like if, yeah, if it looked like are. if it looked like the crucified or uh, Steve Saker or oh, something okay. like that, I wouldn't be a, I wouldn't be opposed to that. So tell you, you a little you brother, would that would be awesome. I'd though. get I'd him. get a tattoo if it, it was cool enough. Oh boy, because <laughs> talk about publicity! I would tell everybody. <laughs> you know? I put talk it on my about forehead. Publicity. Yeah, yeah, I'd I'd maybe the tattoo it on my neck. Yeah. Is that a picture of your face on your face? <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to start us off with a book. I've been reading like a rampage. It's, it's cool because the summer kicked in and I've just been – I. so I, I'm, I'm going to recommend one book. So I am Brian Wilson, a memoir. Um, I also just uh, – it didn't make my three best, but I picked up uh, – you know, I've, I've been reading through The Gunslinger because that movie's coming out and that kind of jazz. And because you mentioned it, I've only read oh, the graphic yeah. novel. It's the first time I've ever read the book. Wicked good. But anyway, back to I Am Brian Wilson. I was never really a huge Beatle, uh, Beach Boys fan. Beatles. Yeah. yeah, not Beatles. <laughs> not the Beatles. The Beach Boys. I wasn't really a big fan of the Beach Boys. Uh, um, but I, I started reading this because my uncle gave it to me when I visited my grandpa down in, down in Dallas, Texas. And I just I it like I like the way he writes, and he's actually convinced me that he's I'm a, I am kind of a Beach Boys fan, but not a huge one still. I what I really like about the book is it brings him down to it's so crazy that because because he struggles with mental uh, you know like depression, and yeah, m mental health issues, and he comes from a pretty rough background, uh, but he. He says in like the opening chapter of the book, he's he's talking about this reunion tour that he's going on. He's about to take the stage and there's like a hundred thousand people come to see him. And he turns to like the stage hand and says, Do you think they'll like me? You know? <laughs> and, oh wow. And it's crazy because I really you know, like every single I don't know, I everybody can identify with that. I was just like, man, I he's a beach boy for Pete's sake, you know, like they're all there. They paid like a hundred dollars at each plus more, you know, for the upfront tickets and stuff, but they're all there to see him, but he doesn't really get it. You know, he doesn't really understand his identity, you know, um, hmm. I just, I really, it was really human. It's a really cool, I, I, I highly recommend it. There you go. There it is. Uh, a, a beach boys thing that I, I think of every time this comes up is, Rolling Stone, I don't know, 10 years ago or something, did their, like, most influential bands of all time. Mm -hmm. and, and Beach Boys was three. Oh, yeah. wow. And I always remember, like, when I saw that, I was like, that's, there's no way that's true. And then the more you think about it and the more you realize, like. How many people they influenced. Like, oh, maybe that's true. It's crazy because in, also in the book, he was told by George Martin, the one of the Beatles guys, you know, like who wrote a bunch of Beatles songs and produced a bunch of Beatles albums and that kind of jazz. Uh, that guy, he told Brian, you're a genius. And if you hadn't written Pet, Pet Sounds, there would be no Sgt. Pepper Lonely Hearts Club Band album. Wow. That it was, that's incredible. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Rolling Stone's a little biased too, though I think, because uh, the Cameron Crow, one of those first early writers, and he's come out with some movies and that kind of jazz. He was. I could, there would be no Rolling Stone magazine without Cameron Crow, without Cameron Crow <coughs> getting involved in the Beatles. Uh, not the Beatles, the Beatles. I don't know why I keep saying the Beatles. I don't know either. I don't know either. I don't know, but another Rolling Stone trivia thing the other day. Uh, last the last issue two issues ago was the cover was uh what's his face radiohead guy radiohead guy Tom and here. there would be no radiohead if it wasn't for alanis morissette <coughs> boom boom my wife is vindicated that's awesome <laughs> because my, my wife's running joke is have you heard alanis morissette's new one have because you heard the new alanis have you heard the new alanis <laughs> and it's funny that Radiohead, the most pretentious alternative rock band ever, probably. It's, they wouldn't have been found if it wasn't for Atlantis touring Little Jagged Pill and saying, hey, I love that, uh, the Benz album by Radiohead. Let's pray, bring them out on tour. That's crazy. Awesome. I, that blows my mind. I, I should, I, maybe that should replace I Am Brian Wilson. But anyway. Was that the headline or that was in the article? What you that was it? in the article. Oh, man. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't know that. Tommy York. Tommy York. 
Tommy. I bet he'd love to be called Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Two Tones York. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy like York. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy Two Tones York. That's what I call him. All right. Oh, that's, Tommy. This is going to be a two hour podcast unless you save us. Okay. My okay. next one, or my first one, next one total of the whole podcast is um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've said this one already, so sorry if I have, but there is a band I really like called Manchester Orchestra, and they're coming out with oh, a yeah. new album. And they just released the single coming out of the album. And um, if I'm totally I honest with you guys, it. I haven't heard it yet because I'm too busy. <laughs> but I <laughs> know. Make sure one of your three best things that you're grateful for is a song you haven't heard yet. Yeah. Okay. But I love the band. I think that trumps my, Actually, I, I love this, I love this book, but I haven't read the whole thing. No, my, okay, so the thing I'm grateful for is the band. So go ahead and check out their other albums and, and then start anticipating along with me, this new album drop that this uh, music critic that I uh, follow that I really like, he has listened to it and says it's really good and this is an underrated American band can't understand why they're not super popular yet. Um, the guy's name is Stephen Hyden. If you just want to read some of his articles, great writer about yeah, music. Yeah. Um, and he really likes this new album. And so I'm grateful for the band. Listen to their old stuff. Jump on the bandwagon with me and getting excited about this new one. And they're coming to Seattle. So I'm hoping in one of our coolest venues, Showbox. So I'm hoping to, to go if I can. Uh, but it's not until the fall. So. Anyway, Manchester Orchestra, they're really great. I've seen them live. They're a great live, great studio band. Um, I'm not sure where they're from. They're from the south somewhere. but um, I, I think really they're like from them. Georgia. I think they're from Atlanta or Athens, Georgia. Oh, okay. okay. But I could be wrong. Where do you, where do you put them musically? He's a PK. I love that guy. I've, I, this is one of the – I'm doing cartwheels that you brought this. I didn't know that he's coming out with a new album. In, yeah. Um, all right, B, you can answer Greg's question. Sorry. Oh, um, I don't know. They're re pretty rocking. <laughs> uh, but like Jason said, he's a pastor's kid. So a lot of his lyrics and he's not it's not like a Dave Bazan situation where it's like anti everything he's ever like learned. Yeah. But um, it's very thoughtful and it's thoughtful about the church and it's thoughtful about having a mature adult uh, understanding of your faith rather than one you probably grew up with because your dad was a pastor. Um, his name's Andy Hull, um, and so he does other art things having to do with that too, but the main one would be the band. Um, so yeah, I I just think his the lyrics are really thoughtful. You can hear them even though it's over a rock and, you know, lead guitar and huge drums. Um, their sound is pretty big, but, um, but actually one of my favorite albums is them unplugged, stripped down. It's called Park Avenue. I think they're at a, someplace called Park Avenue. And so it's really cool to hear these huge bombastic songs just put to a guitar in his like soft voice. And you really get to hear the lyrics. And um, so anyway, I don't know. Are, are you saying like who I'd compare him to? They're, I think, I, I, think I, played, I, I think I played him for you, Greg. And I think one time you, you <laughs> said that he kind of, he sounds like Bright Eyes. He sounds a little like uh, Connor. Mm -hmm. Um and I think he, I throw him with Pedro the Lion, like I like David yeah. is on. I kind of he has but more a, rocking than Pedro. And I think I I think I've told you the story before, but I went to see him live down in San Diego, and one of my favorite things anybody's ever done at a show was done by Andy. Andy steps up to the mic and goes, "I think you guys are gonna really like this one." <laughs> and he, he just and he just rips the roof off the building. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good it's way to really, use the song. I like that. Yeah, he's yeah. pretty funny. That's awesome. And also, that if you have you heard Hope B? Yeah. They came out with the Cope. Hope and then and Hope. Then, and then they they acousticized the Hope, and I, I it's like your yeah. Park Ave. Yeah, I, I like yeah. I like it when they when they take that turn too. Yeah. Boom. There you go. Right. Manchester Orchestra. All right. Manchester. Um, my first one for the last week is I saw the movie, the new movie, Baby Driver. Uh, oh, Dave, I really amazing. want to see that. Yeah. Okay, you go, you go. You go. Uh, it was really good. Um, it's uh, it's like an hour and a half of what the previews make it look like it is. Like it's, it almost feels like, uh, <laughs> awesome. It feels almost like like one long music video kind of like it's just and there's like an intensity to it and it's fast. It kind of when you watch it, it makes you feel sort of like 
the first time you watched, or the first time I watched uh, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, or Love. Those old Guy Ritchie movies, like it's just fast, like it, it moves yeah. at a different speed than everything else you've seen, but it looks so good, like it's like it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's a, it's it's it, it's an interesting movie on a bunch of different levels, but it's like it's just the the word that I keep thinking of for it is it's like a sleek movie, like it just it, like it, it looks it looks like a car, kind of, like a movie feels like a car, kind of. This is really cool. So. Yeah, and it's the same guy that did uh, Shaun of the Dead and um, yeah, Hot cop. Buzz. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Yeah. That's so more of like a comedy bent. All the time, but this one's like, this is, I, I don't know, I'd have to see it again probably, but it's it's a heist movie that has a bunch of heists in it and then just a main character that's just super interesting. And I, saw, I saw an interview with uh, Jamie Foxx, and Jamie Foxx says, that this is Simon Pegg's, the guy that directed it and made the movie or whatever. Edgar Wright. Is it? Isn't his name Simon Pegg? No, well, Simon Pegg's an actor. Movie. Yeah. That he always uses. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the actor. I thought he was. So you're thinking writing. he I was, was probably talking up. about the movie the, the director, right? Yeah, yeah, the director. I was thinking. Yeah, he's saying that this is the culmination of the director's work. He says it's the best. It's the pinnacle. Yeah. Wow. Do you agree with that? Do you think you, you agree with that? I I think so. I mean, it, it's the it's the most sort of like all the like all the Scott Pilgrim movie or not Scott Pilgrim, but the all, all like the Hot Fuzz and all those like they all take like a weird turn two thirds of the way through the movie that just gets so absurd. And uh, yeah. and I like that, but it's like it like just goes off the rails kind of. And this yeah. one never goes off the rails. It's like it's a very tight like concise like it. It's the first movie in a while I've been to where you watch the whole thing and you get done. And it's like you didn't realize how long the movie was because it was it's so fast. Like it feels like you've just sat down kind of. Um, I don't yeah. know how to describe it otherwise. Like, but it's just it's a really well made movie and it, like every shot is really cool. The music, the soundtrack's amazing. Jason, you'll love it for the soundtrack. Um, it's a it's like it's a it's a car movie, but it's like it's it's a like distinctly American kind of movie, but it's also got like really good actors playing really kind of crazy parts and so simon pegg people. doesn't write those things i always thought like simon does, pegg was in he does involved write in them. making he writes but some he, of that stuff that's oh, like okay. his writing and directing but he's, not the director. he's not the director yeah and he didn't write this one he did not no. edgar wright wrote and directed this one yeah okay wonderful also another thing i'm grateful for is scott pilgrim saves the world that's one of my favorite really movies awesome. love super um, underrated movie yeah everyone should watch that one yeah, i don't think i've seen it Scott Pilgrim saves the world. Ooh, I'll put in but... the summer watch list. I watched Casablanca the other day just for the first time. Have you ever watched yeah. Casablanca? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good film. It is a good film. <laughs> it's the end of the story. <laughs> yeah. This one's not like that one. <laughs> no, it's not like, it is a it's not like Casablanca. <laughs> no, it's different. There's, it's a different. There's a couple of differences. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> <laughs> John Hamm is really good in this one, by the way. The, oh yeah, I saw him. I thought, like, I saw the previews, and I thought, oh, he plays like a really small kind of role, but he doesn't. He actually has a pretty big role in it, and it's, it's really good. That's funny. Nice. Play a bad guy, you know? I'm super jealous that you saw that, and I really, really want to see it. Baby Driver, yeah. playing in a theater yeah. near you. There you go. Hey, Jade. Maybe All they'll right, give us Jason, free t-shirts. I'm Maybe up two. again. Holy smokes, we're cranking! I think my second one is just this this whole Midwest like camping and experiencing life deal. And uh, I think I'll sum it up with Zeke. We took Zeke. Uh, one of my congregants has uh, 133 acres out in this place called Shelby, Michigan, and it's mainly to hunt deer on. But he has tractors and he's got quads and he's got all this stuff that you can play around on these. 133 acres and he's cleared all these paths and stuff like that and my son is more the cautious type and he's he he doesn't do anything unless he thinks he, he's gonna live you know <laughs> he's like real calculated and so to see him because i told him i wanted to bring him and just that gave him some anxiety like he was like i don't even know if i want to go dad it's a little nerve-wracking it's a little scary you mm -hmm. know but then I'm like, just show up, and then we'll we'll go around the lawn at first and just ride the quads on this grass. And it was just so cool to see him just 
test like push his limits just a little bit like a little at a time and by the end of by the end of the day he was uh he was going up the like the hills there was this one hill that he that you have to you have to gun it because it's kind of sandy so if you don't if you don't keep your speed up, you don't stay on top of the sand and you don't mm -hmm. make it up the hill. So you have to, you can either roll, you can even roll backwards. You know, it's pretty steep, but he, he just, he like a boss. He just hit the gas pedal and boom, he took it. And I was mm -hmm. like, dude, that guy's awesome. So I guess mm -hmm. Zeke, uh, Zeke conquering his fear and just getting a front row seat to those kind of things, you know, as a parent, it's pretty, pretty darn cool. So that's, awesome. that's my, that's my two. I like that one. That's good. That's, that's, yeah. Those are under underrated as parents, like those little moments like that where you see, yeah. you see them start to kind of develop the stuff that they're going to have to have going forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, Is that's, Elsie that's more a risk taker or? Yeah, not? Elsie's fearless. She would, she yeah. would, yeah. She does. She has. She lacks common sense. She's like the other, <laughs> the other end of the spectrum. Like she's, she'll run straight. She like when she could first walk, she would run straight into the ocean. And she'd be a wave would crash over, and she's being dragged out. And we're just like, "What the heck are you doing, dude?" And she'd do it again. Like she would just get up and go, "Okay, oh, yeah, let's try that again. That was fun." Oh my like, god! I couldn't breathe for part of it, but that's cool. You know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but she is. She's a. Uh, she's the fearless, like second, uh, second child with uh, tons of confidence. But uh, anyway, yeah. That's awesome too. That's good. Yeah. Well, my next one is a TV show, which reminds me to tell you guys that Downward Dog might be canceled. So oh, yeah. you I, need to I, start no, watching to make, that coming. There's I no need, way to know. You need to watch it, guys, in order I to tried save to make it, it and through. tweet about it. I tried to make it through. I tried to make it through <laughs> an episode, and I just couldn't do it. You know? I oh, I think it's so cute. I also I haven't caught up, but the ones yeah. I have seen are so cute, and I want to watch more. About. I think if I were sitting in a room with Rio. You're done. Yeah. I yeah. would I would might like that show. But, Just like hug him and stuff. But <laughs> that's a huge if, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's not realistic or possible. Yeah. <laughs> we'll save all the episodes so that you can watch them when you come over with Rio. <laughs> okay. 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 Anyway, it's so it's not that one, but um I really like the show Jane the Virgin and I have a feeling that Malia likes it. And if she doesn't, she probably should watch it. Yeah. She likes she it, right? Like it. She does like that okay. show. Yeah. And recently season three just got on Netflix. Uh so that's super exciting for me. And um yeah, I've always liked the show. It's really it's like a soap opera kind of but also just like also very heartfelt and thoughtful and i don't know if you guys watch it but maybe some of the listeners have some opinions about that show um that's just something i'm grateful for i guess more just excited that the third season's available to me because i was trying to record them all and then i was just like oh i didn't have all the episodes and i was like oh, i'm never gonna watch the season three it'll never happen and then it like came on Netflix like a week after it, it stopped airing on TV. So I just feel like really lucky. And um, <laughs> now I just need like time to watch them. And I watch them in like little 20 minute parts. I'm like, I can't wait to see what happens next. Um, so it's taking me a long time to get through them. But they really, um, actually the word that I would use for that show is cute. It's just like very cute. Yeah, shock you, but it's not something I look for in a show. <laughs> well, maybe the recommendation's not for you. It's okay, that's fair. Out. That's totally fair. I think my I wife found that this show. week, though. So, I think my wife uh, found that show, and she does like that show. But I would, since we're on TV, if, is there anybody else going to do a TV show? I'm mm -mm. not. Okay, I'd love to interject. If you have it, if you're not watching The Bachelorette. Oh boy. You should you should watch just the standalone episode like two or three because they did two this last week, but the week before that. The week before that, watch that episode. Why? It's the greatest I think it was <laughs> the greatest I, I think that? it was the greatest episode in the history of the show. What what are, yeah. can you put some context was, to this? Because like the for the like since the beginning you know it's like week seven or eight or something like that there's a the youngest kid 
I just you can't stand him. You look at his face and you're just like, ah, I can't stand that guy. He's got like crazy white teeth. Like he's got this huge grin. His eyes kind of close like that one actor that smokes a lot of weed. What's that guy? James Franco. Yeah, James Franco. You, you nailed it, right? <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> but he looks kind of—he has that James Franco look, and just I—I I just can't stand the guy. And so I always—I'm rooting against the guy since day one. <laughs> but then he—he he, he gets his one-on-one -on -one with the with the Bachelorette, and he just opens up his life a little, and it's just—I—it's—it's I, it's the wounded healer. It's like a—it's 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 a, it's a episode of the Bachelorette that is proclaiming that through wounds people are healed it was, it was it was just cool so he automatically he went from being the worst guy i've ever seen on television to i'm like he's i want i got want that guy to win i want him to be president i i, I, I dig him i dig him i team whatever that guy's name is like, i don't i'm not into the show enough to know the names oh but please no, it's the youngest it's the youngest please. kid the youngest kid the youngest kid Anywho, okay. While we're on random TV recommendations, yeah, yeah. let's hear it. Uh, I want to hear because there's summer snakes. Uh, I'm telling you, Josh this summer I, is. The... Uh, my oldest son and I have gone back and we've I've rewatched all of Community. That oh, show was amazing! Like, that was yeah. really underrated historically. I, I kind of forgot about it. Like I watched it when it was on and I loved it, and then I went back. Oh, and I like, love it. I own so it. So smart. I forgot how like how clever and smart that show is. It's amazing. Yeah. There's three or four episodes are you, of the season are, that are just like, wow, this is like the best episode of anything ever. This has been an amazing summer for music and movies, I think, again. But I, the TV, TV's lagging. I think yeah, there's Fargo is done now, too, and Fargo was awesome this year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I really Fargo. Really like the ending. Oh, gosh. Me, too. Was so me too. Yeah. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. That. I haven't left that. Oh, and watch that last episode. I will, I will save it. We'll save it. I'm yeah. going to tell you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Jane the Virgin, go. <laughs> Now, is All right. it me or um, you? Yeah, it's Greg. It's me. And I'm going to yeah. transition into books now. Books? Think, uh, please. Come on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this is a book that I'm not finished with, so I'll say that right up front uh, because it's huge. Like It's it's a two-volume set, but it's uh, Greg Boyd's new book, uh, Crucifying the Warrior God. And uh, it's a – or the Crucifixion of the Warrior God, something like that. It's a, it's an incredible – like the, the amount of work in it is incredible. Like – but it's uh, it's by Boyd, Greg Boyd. Greg Boyd, yeah. It's it's a uh, it's a kind of a challenge to his his express purpose is he wants to reread the Old Testament violent passages in light of the crucifixion and just kind of see what happens. Um, but it's really interesting. Like he's you know like he's he's done it sort of prayerfully and carefully and as a scholar and it's like some of the stuff that he's opening up and starting to see is is. It's a like it's a really like it's it's potentially like a a radical sort of shift in how we're going to read those stories going forward. Mm. Um, and it's it's one of those like those those passages are the ones that always get held held up uh, for why people leave the church or or uh, why people can't believe in sort of Christian nonviolence or something like that. And it's it's uh, his some of his readings of that stuff is, are really compelling. And I'm I'm not through it yet, but just kind of. Because the first book of the two books, it comes in a two-volume set. The first book is basically like setting the argument up or setting the reading up so you understand the crucifixion. And then he has a ton of historical stuff on on different ways. Guys have read that throughout. And it's it's just a really helpful uh, – it's a helpful – and it's a really pretty well-written book for a theology book. Like it's not a hard read. It's just hard material. So – I would there you go. at least so far I would recommend that one. That's been a book I've really enjoyed reading so far. Excellent. I'll take a look at it. That sounds awesome. It's a pretty challenging book uh, in a bunch of like little ways, but I think I think you guys would both you guys have both read enough theology that you know what he's interacting with, and I think you'd appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, that... and I've read Craig Boyd before. Yeah, he's not he's not a hard read at all. Yeah. I do, uh, and it, that's the hard stuff to preach on. Yeah, you know, they, for pastors, I, I whenever that's an electionary text, I'm always like, "Ooh, which way do you take this?" The most about it is he started off trying to write a book, kind of refuting these these Old Testament stories. Yeah, um, and then just stopped. Like he was like, I, "That's not like that doesn't fit with what I think of Scripture, and it doesn't fit with who how Jesus thought of Scripture or any of that stuff." And so he like 
he tried to sort of prayerfully go back into it. And so he, he changed his model of reading those radically from just sort of academically, how do I, how do I justify this violence to how do I prayerfully through the crucifixion interact with these stories? And he comes to a totally different spot. It's, it's really interesting. That sounds cool. What, yeah. B, what, what by Boyd have you read? I know, I can't remember now. I read it actually when I was in San Antonio. It was... Um, Did you read Letters to a Skeptic? Uh, oh, I actually have read that, but I wasn't thinking of that one. It's like a guy sitting oh, on a chair. that's where I know his name from. I didn't know. See, I couldn't figure out where I have yeah. read that book. Letters so, it's skeptic. called like... Blade he also Blade wrote uh, The Myth of a Christian Nation, which is a good book. Um, that Letters from a Skeptic brought my brother-in-law back to Jesus. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's a really interesting guy. Like, it's like him and Piper are both in Minneapolis, but they're very different theologically. So, yeah. John Piper is much more reformed theologically, and, and Boyd is much like not at all, way more Anabaptist. And, uh, and just their categories they operate with are very different, but they're both doing really interesting, good ministry. So, it's kind of it's one of those funny, like, and they both happen to be like in the same place. He's got to play. And I think they both, yeah, I think they were both at Bethel at the same time for a little while. Like, it's just. I don't know. It's just one of those crazy things. But now they're both pastors of these huge churches in Minneapolis. So, do they both think uh, Christian uh, women exist? Uh, <laughs> 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 I love it. That's a step anyway. too far. He thinks they exist. Yeah, that's a step too far. And there's a very <laughs> specific role. They, they just have, yeah, exactly. They just have a very specific role. <laughs> they exist. I think. They can run I think. I think my favorite moment since the invention of this podcast was right then when I'm looking at B's face. <laughs> I love your face, B. I love you so much. Right, it's going to be crazy. Okay, three more weeks and then we'll be back together. All right, here we go. My three. This is my three. Gosh, it, it, this one, it, ever since you said it, it comes back to I think we, we are having it once a week. Just the honor and the privilege of it is to be a pastor you know just to be a minister in people's lives and this one this time it it showed up in the in the form of baptizing uh there's this there's a guy who goes to our church he's his wife was instrumental in hiring me and uh his name's carl they call him cork he's about six five he always wears cowboy boots and jeans i've seen him swimming in a pool with jeans on like he's just He's like a look up a man. And he's like a definition of a man. He's just this huge guy. He sounds a cross between like Johnny Cash and John Wayne. Like he's just got this tough, he's Midwest to the core. He rides Harleys and he's just a really, really good guy. And uh, he's never been baptized. And so he says, Hey, would you baptize me, Jay? And I said, Yeah, in Lake Michigan. Yeah. And he said, And then so he roped in his daughter hadn't been baptized, who's about my age. And then, uh, uh, son-in-law so trevor and bethany and their two kids got baptized too and then a couple more of grandkids were tacked on too so all in all we baptized seven people but it was That's just awesome. it was it was fresh because uh i baptized cork first and then i had him bapt help me baptize all these other guys and just to know some of their stories like bethany and trevor just going through some valleys they're you know go, married Sometimes you go through some valleys, and they went through some valleys this last week or last year, and uh, just to have a picture of redemption and all that stuff. And their kids, and their youngest was this girl named Gwendolyn. She's like, "Can I tell my testimony? Can I tell my testimony?" She's just fired up to just tell about how Jesus has changed her life, and it was wicked cool. So that was it. the the oh. Shilliman, The Shilliman baptism. At the June twenty sixth at the Salt Lake Sea of Michigan, Grand Haven Beach. Boom. That's that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I have yet to do a baptism yet. I'm looking forward to it. But that one sounds awesome, like the whole family. Jason's way is more fun. Uh, in the yeah. lake? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, immersion immersion's cruel. I like immersion. It, I like it's them both. A way cooler I, symbol. Yeah. I I baptized both ways and I, I dig the immersion. That's awesome. Anywho, yeah. Well, I um think I thought of. You still would come up with a third one. <laughs> oh, well, I was gonna do this one oh, anyway. B. Oh, B. But it does have to do with our job. I feel like my third one's always just my job because I do Mine's it a lot. Mine's the world. But um. That's that's okay. Anything's better than your cute TV shows. So. Cute. Oh man, it's so cute. Um. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, this one's about cute middle schoolers because we are at day camp this week. Um, so the day camp is for little kids, but the middle schoolers are the youth assistants. They help in all the classrooms. <laughs> And it is so cute. Um, they, uh, so what I'm used to seeing the middle schoolers is they're, you know, they're there at youth group. They're the ones being served, you know, they, whatever game they want to play, we get that, make sure they're happy, make sure they're making friends. But this is the one week out of the year <laughs> where they are the leaders and you can see them kind of be exasperated by kids who like, don't do what they say. <laughs> and, like they have to like discipline them today. They learned about boundaries, which I don't think they've, even thought about that concept before <laughs> um and they're like little adults this week and it's my favorite it's one of my favorite weeks of the year except for that it's exhausting but um but to see them be the teachers i mean there's obviously um adults in all the classrooms too but they're essentially leading these little um little kids um you know holding their hands making sure they're eating and all this stuff so it's a total table flip that's not the right word you where you are on the other side of the table or something <laughs> um, table flipper table that, that, uh, we, we can coin that table. phrase <laughs> we, let's coin that phrase and that's on our shirt yeah so uh where the they table flipper gratitude serving others mm. rather than being served and i i just love seeing them that way they're really tired it's thursday they still have one more day to go <laughs> And they're so tired. They like, <laughs> like dragon. I'm like, welcome to my world, guys. Yeah, exactly. Think about fall right. retreat. Think about camp and all the things that we do to get ready for that. Uh, but anyway, so I try not to be like, haha, and more of like, just really appreciative of uh, this this week uh, for them. And so I always make a point to come and um, to come and encourage them in their classrooms. They tell the stories. You know, they get all the things ready for the kids. Um, so anyway, it's day camp, and I, I just love watching my little middle schoolers grow up. Nice. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Your table flipping. Uh, is that the right saying? What is the saying? The, the tables, tables have, have turned. turned. The tables have turned. I just but it reminds it. me of, and I'm just going to throw her under the bus here. Jesus. She doesn't listen to the podcast <laughs> anyway. So uh, Allie is terrible with cliches. Like she oh, makes, ditto. She mixes them up all the time. And so my so favorite bad. one ever, we were cleaning a refrigerator together, and uh, she was mad at this like entitled generation uh, <laughs> because they they wouldn't clean the refrigerator when they left the house. So that's why we were cleaning this refrigerator. And uh, and so she goes, I'm just sick of parents always telling their kids to hog the moon. <laughs> <laughs> what? What is that even? Which one? I don't, I don't even know. I like, Allie, what in the world are you combining hog there? The moon. <laughs> and we, we, we kind of got to, I think, that she was combining hog the ball. Oh, with, uh, oh. Shoot for the moon or something. And I was like, Allie, that's, there's no way this makes any actual sense. Hog right the moon. Hog the moon. So so right. When you see her in a couple of weeks, make sure you no, tell I'm her. Seeing her. I'm seeing her Monday. I'm going to see I know. So remember hog to tell her. Moon. She'll be like, wait, how do you know that story? So That's so funny. And I can't believe Allie doesn't listen. We're three of her favorite people. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. What I'll let her know no, that she's been on. this one. So. Come on. To be fair, though, she listens to me talk all the time. That's very <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Another hour. Yeah, yeah that's probably a lot to ask, actually. <laughs> it's actually a job requirement now. <laughs> you have to listen to me. All right, uh, my third one. <clears throat> I went to a Episcopal National Church Conference that's being held in, in Austin this last week uh, nice. for college ministry stuff. Um. And I hate those things. So, Wait, is uh, it just you? Is it just you? Aren't you like? <laughs> anyway, keep going. <laughs> no, there are there are some other people doing college ministry. Okay, good. good. Uh, we do it a little differently, but uh, but it's good. And so Allie came with me, and then one of my my other uh, staff people, Sam, came, and we had a really good time. It was it was a pretty good conference. Uh, we just went for one day of it, which helped. Um, but one of the takeaways for me is there is a a, a lady who is doing music for us. Uh, and she goes, her, her music stuff is all under uh, Poor Claire Music. Um, poor Claire Music. Yeah. And she does really amazing uh, liturgical music. Mm. It's really like, it's, it's uh, like, it's, she's like a bridge between uh, really liturgical stuff and praise music. Like she's managed to kind of do those in a way, like in a setting that's listenable in our, like for me or people who are younger than me. Um, and it's just it's she's 
she's got an amazing voice and a really cool sound. And then she she's also writing these pieces for for the liturgy. So like you know all the, all the parts of the liturgy that you might sing, she has these like new settings for and stuff. And it's she's really great. It's uh, poor Claire music. You can find her online. I think it's poorclairemusic.com. It's like P O U R. P O O, like uh, Saint Francis's sister or wife or something. I don't know. Oh. Uh, uh, she's a saint, but I can't remember. She's somehow connected to Francis. Huh. Um, but so P O O R. Claire. C L A R L C L A I R E. Music. Let me do. I just had it pulled up. Let me double check and see. Oh no! I lied about. Claire C L A R E. A I A R E. Yeah, P O O R C L A R E. Oh my gosh, I spelled it wrong. Both ones I spelled. Me too. Me too. Sorry. <laughs> you know this? Uh, Bill Majoran's turned me on. This this Sandra McCracken is similar. Yeah, she sounds a little bit like her actually in some ways, but okay, uh, cool. But if you go take a listen to it, it's I really it's, like that. It's that really genre. really good. You'll, she's got music on there and a bunch of songs and and like. And uh, all of her stuff like fits in that context. And um, Bianca, she's in Seattle, so. Oh, uh oh. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, Saint Clair of Assisi. That's uh, that's who she picked as the winner. Um, and she's in Seattle all the time, but she's really, really good. I think uh, Allie really liked her too. So I wasn't. It wasn't just me, but um, her name is Lacey Brown. Her actual oh, name. Cool oh name. my gosh! We, <laughs> five yeah. minutes later. Just okay. uh, just look it up. You'll like her stuff. I promise. <laughs> uh, what is poor Claire? <laughs> like then? five minutes. Like oh my five. gosh! I thought her I name was know. Claire. Jeez. Her name is not Claire. She, it's like a, the Beatles aren't actually named the Beatles. They have oh. all the other people. <laughs> she has a project called the Poor Claire Music, like Poor Claire Music. But she's not Claire. I thought she was. Well, you were wrong about that. <laughs> I know, and her name is Lacey Brown. <laughs> okay, got it. Anyway, look it up. You I can will. When we get back from vacation, her stuff is awesome, and it, maybe I, I'll see her live. But, got, yeah, I, it's totally I, possible. Just a, a word of a word out to Lacey Brown. If your name's Lacey Brown, name your band Lacey Brown. Lacey Brown <laughs> that's no, that's no, a wicked no, 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 Lacey, like Brown. Lacey Brown video. project. Yeah. No, or Lacey Brown. Just I go see Lacey Brown. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's a good name too, but her the name she picked is poor Claire. <laughs> poor Claire, which you could spell ten different ways. <laughs> I told you how to okay. spell it. Look it up. You guys are gonna love love this lady. She's really good. Her stuff is really good. It's really easy to pray to. It's like it's just good stuff. So you guys will dig it. Okay. Just a side note: the Beach Boys were named mm -hmm. by somebody at the record company. Huh, they they, they, they sent their stuff off named, named as the right? Pendletons or something like that. Yeah. And then some guy just changed it and said, nah, you're the Beach Boys. It sounds way better. That's a good switch. But, yeah. but she was Are the you, highlight of the conference for me, so that was I would say that. Poor Claire music. Yep. Okay, I think you're picking. I'm right? picking. Oh, yeah, you boy. are picking. Since I hate both of you now, uh, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> this is always how we end the podcast, Greg. Like, I hate you all. Uh, <laughs> start with Lacey Brown. <laughs> yeah, number one, poor Claire music. <laughs> you guys listen to that. You guys are going to dig that. Uh, uh, number two, uh, I really, really liked Baby Driver, so I'm just going to put it on there. I know it's not any of yours, but I don't care. Um, I will be. I'm gonna put uh, <clears throat> doing the baptism and uh, and <clears throat> middle school leaders at BBS together. So that's okay. gonna be uh, pastoring as the next one. And then, uh, so that's three. Number four is uh, Jason and fatherhood. I like that one a lot. That's <laughs> awesome. And then number five. Jane the Virgin, you know it. There's no way it's gonna be that. <laughs> Oh man, uh, this Greg Boyd book is really good, but I haven't finished it yet. So I'm gonna give you Manchester Orchestra. Woo! Nice. Woo! Nothing else of Jason's story, but I think you're really gonna like this one. Uh, yeah, and Jason also likes Manchester Orchestra. Yeah, so and that was yeah. one of the the one of the instigators of me going to visit my grandpa was Ray's funeral, that kind of stuff too. But also, Andy Hall was touring with Dustin Kendrew, and I was trying to get there at that time. Oh man, that would have been awesome. That would have been such a good show. I told uh, what's his face who lives in Dallas to go to it, but he didn't. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Is his name Kyle Gillespie? 
Yeah, Gillespie. He's probably had another kid that day. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's hilarious. Except for they're due any day now. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. They have kids all the time. They probably have their third child before we do the next podcast. It's going to be pretty close. <laughs> Gillespie! All right. I don't, don't want to be a Catholic off, anymore. I don't want to be a Catholic anymore. I'm going to be a super Catholic. That's still my favorite story. We'll, we'll tell that one when we get back. <laughs> yeah. Three weeks. All right, guys. Three okay, weeks. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. See you then. Bye.